ഓം നമോ നാരായണായ പ്രണാമം സ്വാമിജി സ്വാമിജി വിഗാൻ ദ ട്വൽത്ത് ക്ലാസ് ഓഫ് ആത്മ ബോധ പോയിന്റിംഗ് ഔട്ട് ദാറ്റ് വേദാന്ത ഡിസ്കസസ് ദ നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് ആത്മ വിത്ത് വേരിയസ് എനാലജീസ് because we know atma with attributes when we talk about atma we sometimes feel that it is a new subject in the 24th shloka bhagavat pada brings out the difference between inherent nature and the habitual characteristics of self habitual nature of self is that with which we are habituated from childhood the inherent nature is consciousness and it is satchidananda this is the difference between swarupa and swabhava shankaracharya ji brings an example of the light of the sun the coolness of water and the heat of fire to elaborate on this light is sun because light is the inherent nature of sun it is called swarupa lakshana the inherent nature of anything the eligibility for us to know the inherent nature of self is to inquire about atma we have studied that pure means a thing as it is with its own character this inherent nature is not experienced by us because it is subtle because of ignorance we think that if we learn vedanta we know vedanta we bring knowledge and practice knowledge because we do not believe that atma is knowledge we think bliss is outside and we search continuously for it if we accept and meditate on the fact that satchidananda nitya nirmalata is the real nature of atma then there will be no agitation in the mind when we contemplate on this we all feel that yeah. i know atma i know vedanta this notion of i know is explained in the 25th shloka when you say i know it is your ignorance that says i know if you have knowledge of self you will not say i know this is a contradiction here two things the essential nature of atma and buddhi vritti are connected here we confuse these two due to lack of discrimination and we connect these two things atma illuminates the buddhi when these two are connected then atma becomes buddhi the self becomes intelligent then there seems to be the union of buddhi and intellect when in fact the self has no connection with anything therefore we call it reflected consciousness in reflection there is a connection but that connection is not an actual yeah. connection swami ji then explained the meditation technique that is simple and can be practiced when you do any action when you listen to something and feel i know it means that you have received it because you know it our consciousness is only witnessing the process atma does not ever perceive objects outside atma only witnesses the objects in the mind this is the difference between sakshi atma and the seer as atma atma is a subtle function of the mind when you call it as an object our mind says that it is outside it is gross it should have form now from today onwards when you feel i know you should know that it is the intellect that knows in the 26th verse it is said that there is no modification in atma you can change the ego or make your ego light by accepting the ego of others atma never undergoes modification and the intellect is always with modifications the intellect does not have its own capacity for experiencing consciousness when the reflection happens the intellect becomes consciousness this is the main difference between intellectual function and the existence of self this is another discrimination technique this individual self knowing everything says i am a knower because intellect is reflected in consciousness and the changes are happening in the intellect then we feel that i am a knower this delusion is not right whatever happens in the intellect the individual self takes it all as his own activities we can practice this in our daily life in all our activities and think that i am not doing anything whatever is being done is done by all other elements 
This is discriminative knowledge. Now, when Vedanta says this, Vedanta is talking about the reality that can be experienced by our own intellect. And so everyone can experience this. Even a dull person who can accept what the Shastras say. This is the qualification. If he seeks moksha or liberation, then he can get all this knowledge. Now, let us listen to Pooja Swamiji. Hare Om. Purana-nāmālayam karunālayam namāmi bhagavat pādam shankaram loka-shankaram shankaram shankarācāryam keshavam bādarāyanam Sutra Bhashya Krito Vande Bhagavan Dau Punha Punaha Ishvaro Guru Ratmeti Murti Bheta Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Dakshina Mutaye Namaha Shri Dakshina Mutaye Namaha Tapo Pikshina Papanam Shandanam Vitaraginam Mumukshunama pekshoyam Atma bodho bhidhiyate Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Om Namo Narayana to all All are welcome for the this session, the last section, we were discussing the nature of Atma as unchanged. The mind complex, which is always changing. So the all changing matters is based on something which is unchangeable. So without uh, accepting unchangeable subtractum, the change cannot be known. There will be a receiver of all the changes. So in this uh, contest, by this viewpoint, we are uh, going to discuss the next shloka, 27th shloka. The result of in this shloka, we shall discuss 
the difference between false knowledge and true knowledge. So false apprehension and true apprehension. So we know in our life, it makes a big difference if we know the fact, the reality. And if we are misleaded for the sake. If the if our understanding is wrong with the subject, then the whole thing can make you miserable. Uh, anything can happen. So therefore, this is very important to correctly understand what we know. We should know is our knowledge is correct or not. Our, uh, what we conceived, the condition of the mind, we should analyze the mind and try to understand it correctly. So the whole Vedanta, not only Vedanta, but also all other philosophies, they all are trying to teach us this. They say there is no bondage. There is no misery. There is no sorrow. There is no pain, nothing. This is all men mad. So the mind is the central point of all this. So whatever we experience, it, we experience through mind. Therefore, we only uh, know what mind can experience. So the next sloga, we will discuss that point. Because without uh, mind, uh, we have no idea of any experience. So therefore, even when Vedanta talks about Atma, which is our true nature, we are trying to experience it. Is it not? Uh, you are all trying hard uh, to experience Atma. Mm. You are doing Satna for that. Actually, you cannot experience Atma. Atma is always the experiencer. The knower. So the experiencer cannot be made experienced the object of experience. That's the difficulty here. This we have uh, already learned in Tattva Bodha, this, uh, this idea. So the Atma is such a subject which cannot be made object it's always subject. You can say Atma is not the subject for objectification. Such a subject it is. <laughs> so therefore, when we try to experience Atma, no, we, we are taking our way, we are going little far, little, little away from Atma. That's the, that's the difficulty here. So you are curving for the experience of Atma, then you are far going long away from Atma. So the first thing is you accept that Atma is the indolor of all beings and that is residing in you and that is so close to you the nearest 
experience or nearest one which can be experienced. It's the most loved one, most desirable. Therefore, don't try to make Atma as an object. So this is uh, so the part what uh, yes, uh, last uh, session we uh, try to uh, do some meditation that Janami meditation we call it. What was the meditation? You remember that? I know the name of the meditation is I know meditation because we have learned so many meditation techniques. So this is one of that. I know meditation. It means whenever you know something, whenever you have some thought, any kind of thought in your mind, and you think that I know it, I know this, I know that, I know it, I, I know it. So then, the knower, then the meditation comes there. Just try to know the consciousness in that I know experience. So it's like uh, when you say I know Vedanta, then how you find this? When you say I know Vedanta, you must think that this I know is because of my own consciousness. I know Vedanta because I am conscious. I know Vedanta because I am pure consciousness by nature. Huh? I am hearing to sound. I know what sound it is. It means I am conscious. I am consciousness. So, this is the process. Similarly, when you think about something, so when you uh, have some kind of emotions, for instance, we can say if you are angry, so you, then you know I am uh, having this experience. I have uh, uh, some agitation in my mind. So you know it. So meditate on that. Why you are angry? Because you are consciousness. So then there is no anchor. Because when you realize that you are consciousness, pure consciousness, now how can the anchor touch you? There is no connection. It's only a... Uh, fluctuation or is only a, a, a manifestation or reflection in the mind because of some object, because of some reason. So therefore, to discriminate this, the right knowledge and wrong knowledge is very uh, essential for our growth in this meditation techniques. So in 27th uh, shloka, we chant that first. Raju sarpavadatmanam jivam nyatva bhayam vahed. Naham jiva paratmeti. If Atma is all pervading, Atma is everything, Atma is omnipotent and omniscient, then why there is fear? What is the reason of fear? Did you ever uh, think about this? Why you are having so many 
different kinds of fear from different objects, from different situations. It's all connected to body, mind, identification. You think that somebody will kill you. Now, which is going to be killed, which is going to be uh, destroyed? Only the body. So the identification with the body makes all kinds of fear. And Therefore, here it says, Raju Sarpavad Atmanam. So we know this uh, example, Raju and Sarpa. The serpent snake on a rope. Uh, rope and snake. Uh, this ex example is very famous in our Vedanta discussion. So you know it very well. So snake and rope. Now Radhu Sarpavata Atmanam on so on self. Jeevam Matva Bhayam Vahe. Jeevam Matva. Having known this self as individual jiva, relative individual being, individual being. Now how this individuality is formed? You may say, because I am a human being, I have a body, therefore the individuality is born. No, it's not true. Body is not making the individuality. The mind which accepts the body as its own existence or ego which thinks that this is my existence, this body is my existence. Then the individuality is made. So as soon as the individuality appears, fear comes. Because then there is so many reasons for fear. Uh, you have death fear and uh, so many other fears. This is fear and uh, fears of uh, we are from society, we are from uh, outside objects. So all kinds of fears. So this is jivam nyatva bhayam bhaved. Then this individual self, which is called jiva, the relative, relative individual being, is bound with all these fears. But we really want to come out of this fear. We don't want fear because fear is disturbing our happiness, our uh, peace in our, our life. Because of fear, we are unable to uh, think that we are free from everything. We cannot free ourselves because of this fear. So, jivam nyatva bhayam vahe. As long as this individual identification is there, that relative individual being would suffer from bounds of lots of fears. So the, that is the reason. Now, body is not the cause of fear. This is what I wanted to say here. 
body is there, that's okay. But the fear is because of identification, misidentification with the body. There is no discrimination, discriminative knowledge that this body is born and it is uh, growing and after some time it will perish. It has no life forever. It has a limited life. It's uh, it bound to you know, die one day. We all know this, but it's difficult to accept. We don't want to accept. If anybody talk about this, we don't want to listen to that. No, if I talk more on death than fear, you will be disturbed. Why Swamiji is talking so much of death? Because again, again, when you listen to death, the fear will appear in your mind. And you say that uh, we, we are ready to learn Vedanta. We are uh, uh, sitting and listening to learn Vedanta. And we don't want to listen about death. We don't want even to just uh, hear that sound, death. Because death, the sound will also make some fear. It is it's considered as unhappy. The unhappy sound. So, why? Because the reason is fear. Because when you listen to this sound, death, mrityu, thy fear will appear in your mind. What, what is that? You will, you will just think about, oh, I will also die. Death means I will also die. One day I will also die. So this, this will make uh, all complications in the body and BP will be raised and the heartbeat will be uh, no, <laughs> disturbed and everything will be disturbed. Just listening to this sound. But that is the reality. Now Vedanta says it is very simple. You don't have to do anything. Just make a discrimination, a separation of this body, this perishable body, and the unperishable Atma. That's all you have to do. So, the next line says the same thing. Naham jivaha paramatmeti nyadas ched nirbhayo bhavet. Naham jivaha. I am not this individual ego. I am not this, uh, this individual being. I am all pervading. I am omnipersent. So accept this. Naham jivaha. If you think you are a jiva, then there is death. Death for whom? Death for that jiva, that individuality. So therefore, individual self is one with the Atma, the Paramatma. There is no real individuality because this individuality is superimposed like serpent on rock. So Adishthana and the imposed uh, object there. So this Naham uh, Jivaha Paramatmeti I am the Paramatma, the Supreme Self, the all-pervading Self. Paramatma means the highest one, the highest existence, Sat Chit Ananta. Existence, consciousness, and bliss. That's Paramatma. I am that one. Nyadasya nirbhayo bhavet. If one understands this, then in that very moment, right there, he becomes fearless. Nyadasya 
निर्भयो भवेत सो ही रिगेन्स फियरलेसनेस बिकॉज फियरलेसनेस इज इज नेचर व्हेन वी स्लीप इन डीप स्लीप इज देयर एनी फियर you experience any fear in deep sleep where you have no consciousness no idea about anything it means you are there in that stage of experience in that stage there is no fear it means fearlessness is the reality with you so nyadashchet nirbhayo bhave having known this this individual self becomes paramatma there is no fear so cessation of all kinds of fear and he feels himself himself as blessed one he feels he experiences himself as bliss so therefore it's very uh simple and direct so accept this that's all and if you need any uh logic any proof for this to make mind uh rationally understood then you can put all the logic we learned we learn from tattva bodha and atma bodha now just think of this who is going to die which part of my body is me this is the meditation in this shloka so always think if i am this body which part of body is me You, you all know this huh? can you say which part of your body, body is you hmm? no you may say the heart is me may say no no not heart because brain is again important so brain is me heart is me i no no is this if take any part of body you are not any part of body you are you are just accept this body as you that's all so whenever you have some fear any kind of fear try to think this what is the reason of this fear why am i am having this fear because i don't want fear of death i don't want to any kind of fear so try to be in that stage of fearlessness especially i always uh, say in my satsang class no a small child when we bring up child or uh, no we should not give them any kind of fears let them grow fearlessly but uh, unfortunately most of the parents they don't know the psychology of child they don't understand how to grow a child because all these fears are uh no brought to us or it, it's is uh, because we had such experiences in our childhood or more more uh, like uh, no when we think about uh, something or we do something wrong our parents used to say this so therefore in childhood it's very important to 
make children fear free they should uh, uh, be with their own uh, intellectual growth because if you give any kind of fear or you you uh, bring them like that the body will react and the mind will react and the real growth of brain actually stop it become dull because of this fear i think you understand this so therefore this atma and paramatma there is no difference only the identification with body and change that identification by discriminative knowledge that the naham jivaha so always think of this naham jivaha i am not this individual uh, i am not this individual because you have uh, uh, taken care of body for all your life it's enough now there is no need to take uh, so much care of body because it's already there the subconscious mind will take care of body because now you are trained subconscious mind how to take care no uh, no when we wake up in the morning we go to washroom and uh, brush out uh, everything we do it's all actually uh, what we say subconscious mind is doing those things it happens like that because you know how to manage this body now whenever you have uh, some time and your mind is free think about this how i become like this how i am identifying myself with this individuality is this ego why not i change this so naham jivaha paramatme ti nyadas ched nirbhayo bhavet this is the result of true knowledge the false knowledge brings fear and this true knowledge brings fearlessness so now you are choice you can choose which you want okay so we take next shloka आत्मावभासयत्येको बुद्ध्यादि निंद्रियाण्यपि दीपो घटादिवत्स्वात्मा जडैस्तेर्नावभास्यते now there can be a question why this intellect and mind do not understand do not know atma what is the reason because whatever we know we gain knowledge through intellect or mind so what we call knowledge is actually intellectual knowledge if atma is there why we don't know atma what is the reason so says as i said atma is the knower for the sake of understanding we think that atma is the knower knower of all things or everything atma is always knower not only the knower of uh, objects outside or uh, inside the mind but also 
the the time the past present the future so atma is the knower of all that then atma if atma is the knower then atma cannot be made the non the object and the intellect can only know by making objects others objects only objective knowledge intellect has there is no subjective knowledge so if you want to know by intellect then the atma should be made an object that is what we are trying to learn here we are struggling to make atma an object and which is impossible therefore we continue to study uh, vedanta one after one after another one after another we are just continue because we are trying our our best to make atma an object and clearly perceive it conceive it experience it now i will tell you an interesting thing this mind or intellect can at its best conceive atma but cannot understand atma just it can receive informations about atma but it cannot know atma so at his its best uh, effort it takes all the reasons and make uh, some idea and conceive some idea uh, then it stops because then it says uh, you are trying to do something impossible it's not possible by me then the mind leaves that effort यतो वाचो निवर्तन्दे आनंदम ब्रह्मणो विद्वान् न विभेदि कुदस्तनेति इट सेज माइंड ट्राइज इट बेस्ट टू नो आत्मा बट व्हेन इट फाइंड्स दैट आत्मा कैन नॉट बी नॉन it withdraws and say no no there is no atma nothing like this this all vedanta is all uh, false there is nothing no because i i am unable to understand i am so intelligent and so able if i cannot understand atma then there is no atma if i is there i could understand perhaps in this stage we leave all our studies meditation and everything become uh, no depressed by this it's not possible we changed our gurus because uh, because one guru we thought he may teach us everything uh, but for uh, uh, after learning a uh, few years we find that we are not getting anything it means there is some problem with the guru so you will change one guru to another then learn from there the same thing happens there as well the whole life we continue change uh, gurus and teachings and test books and uh, no systems and we try to do all this but the problem is we are aiming something which is not possible we are trying to make impossible possible therefore it is it will be 
in vain. All the effort will be in vain. So therefore, it is said, Atma avabhasa yati ekaha buddhyadi indriyanyapi the Atma illumines all this intellect, sense organs, mind, ego, and so on. Atma avabhasayati ekaha. Atma alone avabhasayati. Indriya buddhyadi in Indriyani, like sun. When sun shines, it illumines all the objects outside. But one thing, the important point here is, although Atma is there always, and illumine, uh, illumines all the objects or functions of mind. But without partaking the FX, without changing itself, Atma is not partaking with uh, mind and its function. Atma is not involving in that. So without involving itself, it makes all the changes. Now we can take the same example of sunlight. The sunlight, if the in the presence of sunlight, all the changes happen. We are we are not even caring the sunlight. We don't care. Sunlight. Sunlight is the energy of all the functions. But can we say there is, uh, is any action of sunlight? No. It has no action. By its, person, it, it, its presence, everything happens. And then why it happens? What is the need for this? You know, someone can ask why uh, Atma uh, is taking so much uh, uh, trouble to illumine and uh, make everything happens. Why Atma is giving energy? What is the reason? You no. Know? People ask uh, if uh, God is creating this world. Why he is creating this world? He could sit there quietly. No, after creating this world, making all the troubles and wars and worries, no. Uh, what is the need for this? He could just sit quietly there. Then our Shastra says in Pradharna uh, Upanishad, it is said, Indro Maya Bhippururupa Iyate. Tadasya rupam prati jakshanaya rupam rupam prati rupo vabhuva tadasya rupam prati jakshanaya So it says Atma alone was there. Then what Atma thought was let me reveal myself. Uh, he, because when you sit quietly, you, you will uh, develop some ideas. Then you go out and you no, know, if there is no work, you will just go for a, uh, you know what you say shopping. Uh, nowadays, just we go for a shopping means you have uh, some friends there and uh, some something. Just, uh, similarly, Atma was uh, alone there. But he thought, Atma thought, let me reveal myself to the world, to everything. Although he was alone there, to whom he wants to reveal? To himself. So, revealing 
ourself to ourself. Now, is it possible? Can you reveal yourself to yourself? <laughs> you are the revealer and you are uh, revealing yourself. No, it doesn't uh, make sense. But it happens. No, you reveal yourself like uh, in front of mirror. You know, when you go to washroom, you first to see, look at your face through mirror. The mirror which is there in the wall, on the wall. So now what you are doing? You are seeing yourself means your own space. As you are seeing it. The face is seen through mirror. So then you, you are happy. Oh my, I am very good. Uh, it looks good. Yeah. So you smile and you know, then see, oh, it's very, everything is okay. So now what you are doing is you are seeing your own face and you are enjoying it. You are revealing yourself. And in uh, some uh, magazine or somewhere I read uh, a few years before, uh, looking at mirror for uh, 10 minutes daily is a very good uh, curing uh, process or relieving uh, you know, tension, you know, whatever the problem in the mind. So it's very good for mind. So when you look at mirror, uh, something happens inside. So there is some revealing. So he is illumining all this because Atma is revealing itself to all these objects. Therefore, we always give so much respect to ourselves and so much we love our own self. So the most respected and most loved thing is Atma, our own self. But sometimes it is not recognized and uh, misunderstood. That's all. So therefore, when we understand this, this is actually what is happening. Then, that's called Atma Jnana. Knowing our own self. So, Atma Avabhasayat Yekaha Buddhi Ati Indriyanyapi Dibo Ghadadivad Swatma is another uh, example. It's like a lamp. Deepaha, lamp. Ghadadivad. Like the pot and other objects are illumined by lamp. Swatma jadair teir na avabhasyate. Therefore, this uh, buddhi, indriya and others, intellect, mind and sense organs cannot illumine atma because atma is illumining all this. Like lamps gives light but there is no need we don't need light to see the lamp. We don't need light to see the sun. And there is, uh, we, we don't, uh, we don't uh, need, uh, we don't take any light because it is self illuminated. So deep, ghata uh, diva like pot and others, aswatma. Therefore, jadaihi teirna avabhasyate. This intellect and all other sense organs and so on, they are all inert, jada, insentient matters. They are not uh, sentient by themselves. 
So all these are insentient matters. Therefore, they cannot illumine Atma. So mind, ego, sense, organs appearingly illuminous, but they are not. They are illumined by Atma's Prakasha, Atma is consciousness. Right? So, Jedair na avabhasya. Therefore, as I said, you are trying to experience Atma. Now, the question comes how you are going to experience Atma? By which means? By which instrument you are going to experience Atma? Can you experience Atma by body? This physical body? No. Because this physical body is there only in this working state. Even in dream state, this body is not there. The awareness of a body is not there. But you are there. So you cannot uh, experience, you cannot know Atma by this body. Similarly with prana, similarly with mana, similarly with intellect. Now ego is left. So what is this ego? How this ego appears? If there is no body, there is no mind, there is no intellect, then where is ego? Actually, ego is a, a, an appearance on all this, all this body-mind complex. There is no separate existence for that. So when there is no body and mind, then there is no ego. You don't identify yourself with anything. In deep sleep, there is no ego. Therefore, all this appearingly uh, real existence cannot experience Atma. They are all there, but they are not real. Atma is beyond all this. Uh, so therefore, jadaihi teir na avabhasyate. This insentient body and mind, ego cannot experience Atma. Atma is different from this. Now, you may think, then now we are learning we are learning Vedanta, then what, what we are learning here? What we are learning? We are learning Atma or we are learning Anatma? Atma or non-Atma? Huh? We are learning Atma or learn non-Atma? It's very difficult Both. No, to answer. Non-Atma? Atma. Both. No. <laughs> okay, you are intelligent to say that. But you are learning non-atma. It's not atma. Atma cannot be learned like this. You understand this? All these words, all these efforts are there to learn again this. So like you learn science, you learn uh, uh, all other subjects, you learn this subject as Vedanta and try to understand what, uh, what is body, what is mind and what is the function so all of this. And then after learning, you know these are the functions of these elements. Then what is left? What is left? It should be Atma, that's all. Okay. Therefore, Atma cannot be directly indicated. 
but atma can be known as uh, a separate entity of separate from all this so to know that to make this discrimination we learn all this so the no even the word atma doesn't go to atma even the word brahman is not connected to brahman now then this is a waste no <laughs> so you you is is not connected you are learning something else and trying to experience something else but this is the only way to only way to do that so these words atma brahma paramatma and uh, ishwara bhagavan this is all words used for uh, for the sake of learning we make some methodology to learn all this ha huh, this is a uh, this is the problem or uh, what we can call it this is uh, uh, or uh, we are uh, doing all this by mistake because we had uh, so many mistakes so one of them is this to remove the to change all those mistakes we are doing another mistakes so by this mistakes the all other mistakes will be discarded so this is this is what is happening here so therefore if somebody asks you are uh, really you are, you are uh, read, learning uh, vedanta and about atma you should uh, firmly say with uh, all confident i am not learning atma but trying to discard my wrong learning false non learning i am trying to free myself from whatever i learned whatever i know so freedom from all those then you will experience the real atma you say how beautifully shankaracharya ji is taking you to this level because this is not easy even to convey this idea is very difficult but vedanta has all these techniques vedanta is perfectly uh, systematically made philosophy if you learn uh, step by step there won't be any confusion with this ideas now the next uh, shloka is talking about this point swabodhe nanya bodhe cha बोधूपतयात्म you ever asked others that am i here or not you ever asked anybody you are getting me what i am asking you because you never heard this word <laughs> even in uh, english sentence is difficult to make you never asked am i here i am am i here or am i learn i am i do we don't ask others to prove that because you know what you are doing you never ask your existence that is there or not you never experience your absence of existence you you cannot experience 
absence of existence. Therefore, you don't ask. Svabodhe nanya bodhe cha. Similarly, you never ask, even yourself, you don't, you don't ask. I know or not know? Who knows? Am I, know am I a knower or not a knower? You never ask. It's not possible. Why? Because Sobodhaha. There is no need for any other's reference, any other's uh, evidence to prove that you are a knower. You are you are knowing the object. So both. Huh? So what does it mean? It means the same. You cannot know yourself. Because you are always a knower. Therefore you don't ask others. If I have a doubt, I ask you, uh, you understand or not, you are getting the idea or not, I ask you. But I never ask myself, am I getting the idea or not? Because if I'm not getting the idea, then who is the speaker? Who is thinking about that? So this is actually the highest level of contemplation on Atma. So Atma is evident without any evidence. Atma is giving the evidence to all other evidences. So therefore, sabodha. Sabodha is self-knowledge. The self-knowledge which is always there. There is no absence of self-knowledge. Even in deep sleep, even in coma, there is no absence of self-knowledge. In coma, if the patient is not dead, then what, what people think? He, the patient, patient is alive. The patient has the life. So then it means some awareness is there. It may not be with the objective uh, awareness. It may not uh, uh, be that awareness which we call as knowledge or uh, you no, know, in that kind. But that patient is not dead. It means there is some awareness like in our deep sleep. Okay. So in deep sleep, we have awareness. So what is the difference between uh, coma and deep sleep? In our Shastras, you know what say? Brahma Sutra says, coma is half deep sleep. Ardha Nidra, Ardha Sushupti. There is uh, a discussion about this. So, why it is so, uh, so? Because the deep sleep is natural, but the coma with uh, some reason. There is some reason why the, uh, the that stage comes. This that is not natural. Therefore, there is a difference between this, but the experience is the same. Sobodhaha is always there. 
because if that patient comes out of coma and then what uh, would be his experience? What would he say about that? You will say, I was in that stage, I was not knowing, I don't know what happened. I was unaware of both. And when you ask, you were there or not? And the patient will say, I was there, but I am not knowing. I don't know what happened. So this is this would be his answer. You will not say, my absence was there. You will not say that. He never experienced his death in that coma state. For us, who we are seeing, for us, he is like uh, half dead, half died. No? It's like half death. But for him, he is fully alive. Only there is uh, no thought process, there is no function of mind. So the, he, he was not knowing anything. The Swabodhe Nanya Bodhicha. Therefore, the self knowledge cannot be a negated, so, uh, neglected, or changed. Nothing can happen. It will stay the same. The Swabodhe Nanya Bodhicha. Anya Bodha means there is no not require others' knowledge to prove self-knowledge. As I said, there is no evidence need to make Atma evident. Make Atma evident as at, uh, the, the presence of Atma. There is no need to say that. Therefore, it is ever-existing Pure existence and ever existing. Nanya bodhicha. Bodha rupa atmanaha. Because atma is knowledge. There is no difference between knowledge, the self knowledge, sarupa jnana, and atma. Knowledge itself is atma. If knowledge itself is asma, atma, how can be absence of knowledge there? Because there won't be absence of knowledge in knowledge. There won't be absence of heat in heat. There won't be absence of cold in cold. Because cold itself is cold. You cannot say that. Even this sentence is wrong. So we don't say there is presence of knowledge in pres uh, knowledge. We don't say there is presence of heat in heat. Therefore, we don't say there is existence in Atma. Therefore, we don't say there is knowledge in Atma. We say knowledge itself is Atma. You are getting this idea? The difference? Very slight difference. Normally we say there is knowledge in Atma. There is knowledge in Brahman. There is knowledge in God. But that's not right here. Bodha Rupadaya Atmana. Atma itself is knowledge. Therefore, it cannot be without knowledge. There is no ignorance. Na divasya anya divecha yatha swatma prakashane. Like, uh, for example, a lamp does not need another lamp 
to illuminate, to know it. Very simple. Because lamp itself is light. Therefore, one light doesn't need another light to light it up. So, na deepasya anya deepetcha yatha swatma prakasane. Now, you may think uh, all these are just play of words. No? Just playing with words. I was making so much confusion. <laughs> so, uh, there is no uh, knowledge for knowledge and there is no knowledge in knowledge and uh, without knowledge uh, <laughs> in all this, uh, no, just making all this. Actually, this is very difficult to teach this part of this uh, Vedanta. Because in any language you say this, is uh, is it looks awkward you no know, to just uh, even receive that very difficult to translate like bodha rupataya atmanaha so bodhe nanya bodhe cha bodha rupataya atmanaha how to say this because knowledge itself asks atma therefore there is no need for knowledge to know atma because Atma is self knowledge. So, therefore, <clears throat> no one doubt himself. Someone can doubt others, but no one doubt himself. You ever doubt yourself? No. You ever asked yourself that am I know myself? I, am I I'm existing or not? No. You never ask this. So therefore, self-existence means Existence is self. So on so on existence is experienced by one so on existence. I repeat this sentence again. One's own existence is experienced or is proved by one's own existence. <laughs> Therefore, one's own knowledge, self-knowledge, which we call is self-knowledge. The self-knowledge is experienced by self-knowledge. There is no need for other knowledge to experience self-knowledge. So the altogether, self and knowledge is there. Other than that, it's all additional, adjuncts. We superimpose all this. Sat, Chitta, Ananta. So this is the real I. When I say I am, so this is what I am. This is how I experience. Because I experience my own knowledge. I experience my own existence. So along with that, here, the speciality is when I say I am, that I is all pervading. That I exist not only in this physical body, but 
or so in all other physical bodies, all other existence, all creation is universal. That's the only difference. But I prove myself with this experience. Therefore, to prove myself, I don't need even Shastras. Huh? We don't say, if I learn Vedanta, then I am. If I learn uh, physics, I am. If I uh, learn uh, uh, computer, then I am. Huh? It doesn't mean anything. It, therefore, you are there. You are, you are uh, uh, the ultimate existence. So therefore, this example, you can remember this example. And if we can, uh, where there is one more point on relation with this. Now, as we said, the mind is reflected by Atma. Okay? Therefore, mind say, I am. The individual uh, ego comes there. And mind is reflected by Atma. Now, if Atma is also reflected by something else, if you think that, like that, if mind is reflected, ego is reflected, then why not Atma is not reflected? Atma is also getting knowledge and uh, light uh, from something else. We can say that. It cannot be said. If we, this, if we say that, if we always uh, search for that, then there is no stop. Uh, if, it, if one needs another others support for its uh, existence and that substance needs another support for its existence then the second one needs third uh, support for its, its existence then for uh, third needs four sub support of its existence then what does it mean it doesn't stay anywhere. In Sanskrit, it is said, Anavastha. Infinite regress. In English, we say, infinite regress. R-E-G-R-E-S. -E so it means it goes on. There is no stoppage. So now where the existence is cannot be proved. Therefore, that's not the experience. When we experience our existence, we experience it's as final existence, final experience. We don't have an experience beyond ourselves. What I said is, we don't have any existence beyond ourselves. There cannot be any existence beyond ourselves. Therefore, Atma is experience, Atma is knowledge, is final. If we don't accept that, we think that this is not final, we have to go to uh, heaven to experience that, that then we are, anybody can ask in that heaven that experience, that knowledge from where it comes so that heaven has another heavens from where it is promoted brought so then an absence of finality, there is no final stage there is no final uh, existence. So it cannot be said. See, this is a technical thing I just uh, conveyed to you. This is also, this thought is also there in Vedanta. Therefore, 
we finally stop with atma we finally stop with atma the existence knowledge bliss and we add the word absolute absolute mean that is final atma is not borrowing uh, a bliss from heaven atma is not borrowing knowledge from god atma is not borrowing existence from something else some other substance you understood this therefore you are complete this world is complete and everything is complete purnamata purnamidam purnat purnamudasyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shanti 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 yeah that that's final now if you want to say something you can say Do you have any questions? We can And ask. If you want to ask question, if oh. anybody wants to ask question, please raise your hand. And ask Swami Ji. Shiva Kumar wanted to ask a question. Uh, you namaste. can unmute and ask. Yeah, Namaste, Swami Ji. Namaste. Uh, uh, in this session uh, regarding the atma uh, there is one uh, clarification uh, which uh, i would like to know yeah uh, please carry uh, on yeah this is regarding the uh, when we say like uh, atma sakshatkaram correct atma sakshatkaram or we can say uh, aproksha jnanam correct so what does it uh, mean and uh, For an ordinary, for a common man. Yeah, it's it's, it's very simple as I just uh, said. No, here, uh, Atma Sarthakara means you are identifying yourself with this knowledge that I am not only this body and mind. I am not only in this, but also all pervading. Aham Brahma Smi. so this uh, knowledge reveals the real existence of atma and until then this uh, be uh, because of this uh, identification due to uh, ignorance one feels that i am only in this body i am different from others i am very special i have this quality and that quality so this is misidentification so in that sakshatkara that aparoksha experience he himself reveals that i am not only in this body but also i am everywhere i am all pervading i am the individual of all beings indweller of all beings i have no separate existence from this creation and from this all these individual beings so this is called aham brahmasmi sakshatkar so do we so since uh, as learning vedanta we uh, intellectually to some extent we know the uh, regarding the self yes uh, so, uh, so that is that knowledge enough or is there so what i'm trying to get is since after uh, learning vedanta if we come to know uh, uh, intellectually what yeah. is, uh, whether they saying that uh, the self is, is that enough or is there more to it like uh, it is also said that uh, atma can atma cannot be experienced So in that case, the, again, the uh, approach that I mean, the uh, this of experience comes again. 
so correct correct so, so they, they, this confusing now book. what yeah. we learned uh, from vedantic uh, test books in this context we can say this is uh, a primary uh, knowledge the primary informations we got uh, regarding atma okay so whatever we learned as we learned from other other uh, subject we learned this subject uh, by shastras and shastras are giving the right information about atma now with this when we analyze ourselves by meditating by contemplating manana nidhyasana we realize that these informations are correct because this is going with my experience right there is some voice come yeah some voice uh, and that is so one, this um, is uh, yeah. this is the only difference so first uh, the primary knowledge as we say parokta jnana no it's not direct knowledge and direct knowledge is the experience like you uh, know what is sweet you get i uh, get some information about that then after that you taste the sweet directly so the experience is also there so this is the difference why we depend on shastras and guru because they guide us and they give us the right knowledge of brahman that's all therefore we have to depend on guru and uh, shastra shraddha and all those so they uh, directly you know takes us to that level of experience then it says now as i quoted no edo vajo nivartante so then there are uh, the, the word the sound the shabda cannot give you the knowledge it can only indicate yad vaja na bhyudam edava ena vagat bhyudhyade tadave vabrahmatum vidhi netam yadatam upasate in keno upanishad also it says na chakshusha paschati na vaja so this even shruti shastra itself says it's beyond all this beyond all this words the shastra gives us the support to correctly think about that correctly uh, you no know, make some thought process about that then the experience would come later on by practice yeah but uh, yeah thanks for it but the question is the experience comes it says but it's also said that you cannot experience so it's contradicting so that uh, yeah it's yeah, always contradicting yeah. because when we uh, know the experiencer is different from the experience in that stage we have to say i am going to experience but when we realize that knowledge is itself is me is not different from me the experience itself is me it's not different from me then it become one there is no experiencer and there is no experienced it's it's also said in uh, that same keno upanishad yasya madam matam yasya naveta sah avijnatam vijanatam vijnatam avijanatam so what i said is uh, from that only one who thinks that he knows brahma knows not one who thinks uh, i don't know brahma he knows now what does it mean this is completely contradictory if i say i know brahma i don't know brahma if you say i don't know brahma you know brahma what does it mean it means it's beyond all this knowing process 
So it, it Upanishads itself says, it's there in Upanishads. So if you uh, study the second part of uh, Kain Upanishad, you will find all this contradicting itself, just contradicting us. Yasya matam matam yasya naveda saha. One who declares that uh, I have understood Brahma, I have uh, understood, I have experienced Brahma. Then Upanishad says, he is a fool. He, is, he only knows very little about Brahma because he is declaring that I know Brahma. He cannot be known. Then how can he declare that I have no Brahma? So, so he knows only very little. He is just a beginner. He doesn't understand. That. So this is how uh, Vedanta defined this because that's the reality. To reach there, we uh, make all these uh, practices and sentences and no, like uh, uh, playing with the word. I just now I said, so if you will feel that this is all play with not. You say there is experience, but there is no experience and experience, sir, and experience is the same and all those. So how can be? So this is very difficult. Even in, to say in language and make uh, you know, grammatically correct is also difficult. Uh, because so we, we yeah, cannot we can, say yeah. the experience or itself is experience. Yeah, so we can say it's beyond words. So yeah, we can, yeah, beyond, yeah, so, beyond words, but yeah. we have to say that also so by as, a, as a point as a pointer. Yeah, correct. correct. So can we say Jivan right. Mukta? Jivan Mukta persons is uh, is an approach at Jnana. No, and, uh, actually, Jivan Mukti is a is a stage where we we have one understand this. But uh, if we see Atma, Atma is always Jivan Mukta. There is no bondage for Atma. Bondage is Kalpita, superimposed. So Jivan Mukta means Aham Brahmasmi, he has experienced it. After uh, a long uh, no, uh, process of this contemplation and all those. That's we can, all. Say, That's we can say great souls like Sri Ramana Maharshi, we can say that they, they yeah, come there are, they are, they are, uh, sakshat karma has happened. Yeah, there are so, so many uh, yeah, so many, yeah. saints. Uh, they have so in that case, they do they after sakshat karma, do they stop experiencing the anatma jagat? Can no, because then the anatma jagat is not separate from them. Now we feel the jagat is separate and we are separate from that. Like this different existence and our existence is different. Then they feel there's only one existence. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Thank Thanks. Thank you. So can we conclude, Swamiji? Okay, right. <laughs> oh. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Ho